Thank you, Kelly. Well, good morning. Who's fired up about baptism weekend? Yeah, that's right. No golf claps here. We're fired up. Anyways, the reason that we do this, why? Does anyone know why we do this? It's on the screen, black letters. Why are we doing this? Oh, because Jesus commanded us. Who? Jesus. Oh, you're learning. If I ask who, you know, you say Jesus at church, you're almost always right. Yeah, so we baptize because Jesus asked us to do that. In fact, in Matthew, next slide, Jesus is resurrected from the dead. He is giving his final commission to his followers, the apostles and uh, the, his disciples, and it says this. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Why does he say that? Because he's just been resurrected from the dead about 39 days earlier. He's been cruising around meeting over 500 people in his resurrected body. And he's ready to ascend into heaven. But the point is, who had the authority on earth before Jesus died on the cross, was buried, descended into Hades, took the keys of death and Hades from those evil spiritual beings and ascended and resurrected? Who was in charge then, before then? Satan. Because man had forfeited his dominion when he sinned against God in the garden. And Satan seized it. And Christ conquered him through sin and death. And now has not yet vanquished him. And that's why we're still in a spiritual war. But nonetheless, Jesus has that authority. And he is delegating it to his followers in this passage. And he's saying, therefore, go. Go. The first thing you need to do when you understand that Jesus has authority over you, your job is to go do something. Now, is this just for pastors? Is it just for missionaries? Is it just for Sunday school teachers? Is it just for businessmen? It's for everybody. Let's say it together. Everybody has to go and do what? Make disciples of all the nations. What's a disciple? It's a follower of Jesus. And you have to do it of the nations. And many times we have forgotten that our job is to disciple the nation so that we have a Judeo-Christian nation. And therefore, we have slipped away from our founding, haven't we? A nation that was built on the what? Laws of nature and nature's God, according to the declaration of our independence from our former nation and establishing a new nation based on the principles that are found in the laws of nature and nature's God. And we fumbled because we thought discipling is only a person. It's a nation, one person at a time. Does that make sense? So everybody in here that knows Jesus as Savior is a discipler. Raise your hand if you're a discipler. That's right. How many of you discipled this year? Let me not ask. I don't want to embarrass too many of you. But we're on mission. It is to help people find Christ and grow by sharing our faith, strengthening our family, and securing and celebrating our God-given rights. Amen? So that's what we're excited about. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Thank you. So look at what he says. How do we do this? How do we actually do it? Well, you got to go. You can't sit there and say, I'm waiting for them to come to me. No, you need to go to them. You need to be aggressive in sharing your faith. That's what that means. Not, well, I got a door, a sign over my door that says, you ever want to talk about Jesus, come see me. It's your job to go reach them, Christians. Amen? Who's fired up? Thank you. Thank you. A little bit better. You're looking at me like, man, this is not what I expected for baptism. That's all right. I still love you. So does God. Right? But here's how we do it. We go and we baptize them. Part of this process of making a disciple is sharing our faith. And then when they receive Christ, we baptize them. That's the pattern you see in the New Testament. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because we know that God exists one being in three persons, right? Same in nature, essence, and being. Distinct in personality and function, as the theologians say. And so we baptize in that name. What does it mean to be baptized in the name? It means we recognize that that's our God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that's our God. That's who we serve as Christians. Amen? And then he says something else you do. Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. So once they've expressed their faith in Christ, then they followed that up with baptism. Then they get taught in the principles of the Christian faith, everything that Christ has taught us. 
And that's the purpose why you continue to go to church and you continue to read your Bible, you pray, you get together with other Christians called small group ministry. All that is to help you grow. But this is the process. And why do we do it? Because Jesus commanded it. This is the command of Jesus to his followers. This is our purpose and goal in life. It's not to make money. Nothing wrong with making money. It's not to have a great oceanfront house. Nothing wrong. And if you have one, have me over for dinner. I'll help you enjoy it. <laughs> nothing wrong with any of that. But that's not the mission. The mission is to reach people. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're celebrating today. That's why we're so excited. And then the last line, Jesus says, and I commanded you. And so, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the what? What's the end of, when's the end of the age? When Jesus comes back. The end of the age is when Jesus comes back. Because there will no longer be reason to evangelize. Because Jesus will, what? Sort out the sheep nations from the goat nations. The discipled nations from the non-discipled nations. And he'll build his kingdom on earth with his sheep nations. He says that in Matthew 24 and 5. So that's what we're all excited about. And that's what the baptism is a key link in this process. And so notice this in the next slide. What does baptism mean? It is an outward physical act symbolizing an internal spiritual reality. That's what this is. It's a symbol. No one who gets in this pool or this cold water <laughs> will be, have their sins cleansed by this. That's not what cleanses you from your sin. That is a symbol of what cleanses you from your sin. And what cleanses your sin, we sing about it all the time, is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sin. And he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we ask the Lord, we call upon him to what? Forgive us our sins because the sacrifice was made by the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. And his name is? You got it again? You guys are catching on. His name is? Jesus, that's it. And so this symbolizes the washing merits of the blood of Christ. It also symbolizes something else, that he died on account or to sin, and that he was literally crucified and buried. And so when you go into the water, it's a symbol of you going into the burial like Jesus did. Has it you dying to the power of the sin in your life? So the idea is if you go in a drug addict, you come up what? A follower of Jesus. You may struggle with drugs, but you don't have to because you're a new creation. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're no longer identified by what you used to do wrong. You're identified by who your father is and who the king is that you follow. You become now a son of God who may struggle with sin, but has the power to overcome it through the indwelling spirit of God. This is why we celebrate baptism. We are we are visibly demonstrating a theological truth about what happens in the heart of everyone who genuinely receives the gospel, asks Jesus to come into their life, to take away their sin, to reconcile the relationship with God, and ask the spirit of the living God to live within them and produce his power and his fruit, which is love and joy and peace and truth and righteousness and goodness. That's what a Christian is, and that's what this is symbolizing. So the second thing it does is it is a symbol of the resurrection to this new life I just talked about. A new life that is following God. And then third, it's a public swearing of our allegiance to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that when you come out, you said, I've identified myself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that Yahweh is my God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was just baptized into their name, correct? That's why we say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? So that's the God we stand with, even though there are many gods clamoring for our attention in the culture around us. And so by doing this, we are actually declaring spiritual warfare against the false gods in the kingdom of darkness. How do you do that? Well, next, next slide, please. He says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Remember I told you, you died to sin. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory, that means the glorious manifestation of the eternal power of God, that's what the glory is, the glory of the Father, we too may live a, what's that word? 
new life, a qualitatively different life. What is this new life? It's called eternal life. It's called being born again. It's called having the power of God in you, the kind of power you never had before you knew God. That's the new life. In other words, yeah, you can applaud God for that. It's like they say, I ain't what I ought to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen? And that's what a spiritual growth is about. Next slide. Notice what he says here in 2 Corinthians 10 about this spiritual warfare. He says, we demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God, and we break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bows in obedience to the anointed one, Jesus Christ. You see, now that I have this capacity for new life, that spirit of God is living in me. I have eternal life, life characteristic of the eternal one. I have the ability to say no to sin, whereas before I didn't. I enjoyed it. I just looked for ways to get away with it without getting caught. But now that I'm a new person, my desires have changed. I no longer want to live that way. I want to avoid that. And so I take every thought captive, every temptation that is insinuated into my mind, whether it's from the devil himself or from the culture around me or from my own sin nature. I capture that thought. I seize it. And I say, no, I'm bringing this into submission to Jesus Christ. And I call upon the Lord at that moment. Lord, help me defeat this tempting thought. And he will help you. And your life will change one thought at a time. And that's the power of what it is to live the resurrected Christ. And that's what we celebrate today when we do the baptism. Final slide. Oh, you talk, go to the next one. We already got that. Here it is. Our purpose today then is to hear the personal stories and spiritual journeys of each of these people being baptized today and to support them as members of our spiritual family in their commitment to follow Christ. Do you think you guys can pull that off? So how do you support them? You hoot and you howl. There we go. A little better. Let's do the hoot. Woo, 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 woo. There we go. And then the howl. Woo. Very good. All right. We've got a video to show you to get you ready. My name is Chris, and I've been a Christian for about five years. My wife, Maria, has been attending Beach Cities for about 10 years. I've been doing it for about six. I didn't go with her at first, so she kept coming for a couple of years. And she finally invited me to come along. And so I basically said, well, there's no football on this weekend, so why not? Let's go see. It was, it was very eerie to me, the way Pastor Kent was speaking mostly because it just felt like he was talking directly to me. Like every weekend, it just seemed like he knew what was going on in my head, my heart. And it was just, it was hitting home. And I always had this, this hole in, I don't wanna say my body, in my soul, more or less. I just knew something was missing. And it wasn't until coming to Beach Cities for a couple sermons that I started to feel that, that hole being filled. Like I had, I had finally found something that, that fit right, that, that belonged there. Something in my heart, it was a gradual thing, but something in my heart said, I need to be prepared. I, something big is coming and I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm ready for it. So the next step was to get baptized. But as far as what I want for the future with my kids and my family and, and, and Christ, it's, I just want them to be prepared and protected. Uh, I want them to know the truth. Uh, I always felt like I was lied to my entire life. I want to know the truth. I want them to know the truth. I want them to have the faith and, and just the hope that I have now. That's really what I want for them. Here I am ready to get baptized. Uh, very excited about it. I'm ready to put on the armor of Christ and, and move forward. Would you stand and join us as we declare this? statement of faith together. Through your holy 
Pretty cool. Are we all lined up? All the family get their pictures right now? Very good. Well, this is the most important part of what we're doing today because this is you pledging your allegiance to Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Some of them are long, some are short, you know, but we want to get the whole thing in. And then all you have to say is yes or no. If you say no, we'll say, hey, no problem. Get off the stage. We, we, we need to talk to you. Uh, anyway, so here's the first question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is Yahweh, God the Son in human flesh? Yes. Very good. Do you believe Jesus was sent from heaven to die for your sins? Yes. Do you believe Jesus was raised from the dead in order to offer you the forgiveness of sin? The, yes. Good. The gift of eternal life? Yes. Very good. And a right relationship with God the Father? If you place your faith in him. 
So the offer's on the table, but you have to put your faith in him. So here's the long question. Wait till I'm done. Have you, by God's grace, placed your faith in Jesus Christ to the point that you have personally asked Jesus to come into your life, take away your sin, reconcile your relationship to God the Father, send his Holy Spirit into your life to empower you to live for his will and glory and give you the gift of eternal life. Yes. Very good. See, that was a long one. You guys got it. <laughs> they cheated. They've seen these before. <laughs> Is it your desire to love, obey, and serve God for the rest of your life? And do you this day swear your allegiance to Yahweh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yes. Then here's the good news. Based on this confession of faith, before all these folks, your friends, your family, and most importantly, before the angels in heaven and God himself, you will be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you, worship team. What a great day celebrating these baptisms. Amen? So the reason we do this, we told you because Jesus commanded us, and we want everyone to have an opportunity to know the Lord. So I just want to share with you briefly the gospel message. And it's a very simple message. Even children can understand it, Jesus said. You have to start with the idea that you're a sinner. Anyone have a problem with that idea? I think we can pretty much figure that out. If not, talk to your spouse or kids. They'll share with you what you need to know. And that sin has separated us from God because he's holy and we're not. And if he let us into heaven full of sin, we just make a mess of it like we did here on earth. And so we have to get our sin issue dealt with. So God said the only way we can deal with it is if we pay for it. With, and the way you pay for it is eternal judgment or you accept the substitute that God offers. And that substitute is the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. So what does it mean to believe in him? It means to believe in him to the point that you actually ask him to save you from your sin and to reconcile your relationship with God and ask him to give you the promise of eternal life. So you say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I believe that you are the savior that God sent. Would you come into my life, save me from my sin and make me right with God the Father? Would you forgive all my sin and wrongdoing? And would you send your spirit in me and give me the gift of eternal life like you promised? And the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord to do that in that very moment is saved. And that's all you have to do to be a Christian is ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in through his spirit, take away your sin, reconcile your relationship with the Father, and give you the gift of eternal life. So I'm going to offer a prayer, and if you want to pray along with me, you're welcome to. If you're kind of shy, but you agree with the prayer, say, uh, what he said, God, that, uh, that's what I want. Because it's by God's grace, through your faith, that you're made right with God, the Bible says. So, Father in heaven, we know we're sinners. We know that we can't save ourselves by any good works because all we do is sin. And so, Lord, we pray that you would forgive us of our sin by sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into our life. Lord Jesus, come in, breathe into us new life. Forgive us of all of our sins, past, present, and the future ones we're going to fall into. Cover us, Lord, with your sacrificial merits. And then, Lord, change us on the inside. Give us the gift of eternal life. Cause us to be born again into your family. We want to be ch the children of God. And then give us the strength and the power to follow you the rest of our life, because that's our desire. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, today you called upon the name of the Lord. If you're sincere, you're going to be right. Your life is squared away with God. We want to help you grow. God bless you. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you next time.